Find the regions of increasing and decreasing for the following functions. First function, f of x be equal to square root of x squared minus 4. We'll rewrite that as x squared minus 4 to the 1 half. Before I start doing any work, notice that we have a domain issue here. I can't take the square root of a negative number, so we're going to need to check where x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That's going to be our domain. To do that, we set x squared minus 4 equal to 0. That'll give us the points x equal to minus 2 and 2. Those points are going to divide our real line up into three regions. We'll check our function at a point in each region. If the point that comes out is positive, we keep it. If it's negative, we throw it away. So if I put 0 into x squared minus 4, I get minus 4. So I can't use this middle region between minus 2 and 2. Negative numbers come out, so we can't take square roots. If I put 3 in, I get 9 minus 4, which is positive. If I put minus 3 in, again, I get 9 minus 4, which is positive. So we're going to keep the regions on the outside. So our domain is x greater than or equal to 2, or x less than or equal to minus 2. Now we can start doing some work. So first, we're going to hunt for critical points. We're going to take our derivative, and then we want to know when the derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. Okay, let's take our derivative. So we're going to use chain rule here. We bring the 1 half down, take 1 off the exponent, and then I take the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. If I clean this up, I get x over x squared minus 4. Now, first thing you'll note, if I put plus or minus 2 in here, we're going to be dividing by 0, which should give us critical points. But since they're at the end points of our region, they're not going to tell us anything about dividing the region up into increasing and decreasing. So I don't need to worry about those critical points. Now, what else do we have? Well, I could get f prime equal to 0 if we set x equal to 0. But you'll notice x equals 0 is not in our domain. So we know we have no critical points. So in this case, all I need to do is check one point in each region, and that tells me the whole story. So if I put 3 into my derivative, what are we going to get? We're going to have a 3 over, I don't even have to worry about what the bottom is. We only care about the sign. Square root of anything is always a positive number, if it makes sense. So I'm looking at a positive number when I put in 3. So in this region, we're going to be increasing. If I put minus 3 in there, we'll have a minus 3 on top over our square root, which is always positive. So we get a negative number if I'm on the far region. So over there, we're always decreasing. So that tells me my regions of increasing and decreasing. Next function, consider f of x equal to 3 minus the absolute value of x plus 2. How are we going to approach this? First, I want to get rid of the absolute value signs. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to write this as a piecewise defined function, meaning we're going to split the region up and we'll have a different function for each region. First, I have to get absolute value of x plus 2 under control, though. Now, what's absolute value of, say, box? Well, what happens here? If box is greater than or equal to 0, we're just going to return box when we take the absolute value. So if there's no minus sign, you just leave it alone. If there's a minus sign, what are we going to do? We're going to take box. There's a minus sign in front of box. So we're going to multiply by a minus 1. And that's going to get rid of the minus sign. So if I take the absolute value of a negative number, the net effect is just to multiply by minus 1. So now I'm going to take what I was calling box and stick x plus 2 in there. So the absolute value of x plus 2 is going to be x plus 2 if x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. And it's going to be minus x plus 2 in parentheses if x plus 2 is less than 0. All right, before I go to the next line, we'll clean up what's on the right-hand side. So I push the 2 over as a minus 2 on both of these. And so we note our two regions are x greater than or equal to minus 2 or x less than minus 2. Now, I want to get to our function, so I'm going to take 3 minus each of these pieces. So when I do that, I'm going to leave things as they are 
because I don't really care about the actual function. I just want to take the derivative and written like this, I can definitely take its derivative. All right, next step, we have things written out to where I can take a derivative, so I want to hunt for critical points. So we take the derivative, and we look at where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Let's do that. If I take the derivative, what are we going to get? If I'm on the right side of minus two, we're going to be looking at this function, so the derivative is going to be minus one. If I'm on the other side, we're looking at this function, I take its derivative, I get a one. Now, what's going to happen at x equal to minus 2? So here, let's take a look. If I'm on the left side, it's saying that the tangent line should have slope 1. If I'm on the right side, it says the tangent line should have slope minus 1. So they can't agree, so that means the derivative is undefined. There's not going to be a tangent line at x equal to minus 2. If we look at the graph, we have a corner there. So that conclusion is definitely borne out. Okay, you can't fit a tangent line to that because that thing's just gonna hover. All right, so we have a critical point at x equal to minus two. The derivative is undefined there. What do we do now? We draw a box in, I wanna draw a line in at x equal to minus two, and now I need to check a point in each region. So if I put, say, zero in there, that's gonna be in this region. So I'm looking at zero bigger than or equal to minus two. So the derivative at that point is gonna be minus one, which we would have gotten anyway because we're looking at this point here, its tangent line is just gonna be the line itself. So slope is minus one. So that means negative, we're decreasing in this region. If I take say minus five, it's gonna put me in this region. So our slope is gonna be equal to one, that's positive. So I'm increasing on this side. You note, our increasing and decreasing is borne out by the graph. So we're lucky in this case that we had a graph to go with it so that we could check our answer. Okay, if you wanna go one step further, note, I'm going from increasing to decreasing. So that means I'm gonna have a local maximum at my point x equal to minus two. 